Vibrato, it adds color and beauty to your sound. It helps you shape phrases. It becomes your personal sound signature. And whatever your skill level, we've got some exercises to help make yours better. Because if you do it wrong, it can cause Despotellus, Thornburg syndrome, hepatitis R, and worst of all, it can ruin your tone. Hi, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy. I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and today we're talking about vibrato, the when and how to use it. We've got some great exercises and even some listening homework, so you should stick around. And if you're interested in saxophone masterclasses and product reviews, please do subscribe. We've got some very exciting topics coming up this year. Essentially, saxophone vibrato is a raising and lowering of the pitch, and while we do so, it changes the color and timbre of sound, and that gives us a big palette of colors to choose from while we play musical phrases. Now, you may be wondering what's the best way to do vibrato on the saxophone. Like most things in woodwind playing, there's two ways to do it, the right way and the French way. Vous devez pousser l'air. Fou, 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 fou. Bon. Bon. Now, of course, there are plenty of great French jazz players that do use a jaw vibrato, but in the conservatories, there's a lot of French players that sound fabulous, but they're using a pulsation or air intensity vibrato. And there's a couple of problems with this approach. First off, it limits the variations of speed. There's only so fast you can pulsate the vibrato, and that somewhat limits the palette of colors we can choose from. Number two, it also messes with our airstream. I like to keep my airstream constant, letting the jaw do the work, especially in the low range and the extreme high range, I find that's kind of important. Number three, we can't do the scoops and bends and idiosyncrasies that make jazz music so great without using a jaw vibrato motion. And you do want to play jazz, don't you, Johnny? Yeah, you do. Bon. Bon. So I recommend a jaw vibrato, a raising and lowering of the jaw, which also then changes the pitch slightly and the color and the timbre. It's gonna have a very nice effect. The majority of saxophonists do use this and it works very well. Now there is some debate over what syllable should we say or teach when we use a jaw vibrato. Some people prefer a ya, 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 ya syllable. I'm not crazy about that because that moves the tongue when you say ya, changing the shape of your oral cavity. That has its problems, especially in the altissimo range, where if you make a yeah, yeah, yeah syllable, you're gonna sound like a demented slide whistle. So other saxophonists use a wah syllable. That's better in my opinion, but wah still changes the shape of the embouchure, which is why I prefer a vo syllable. Vo creates an up and down motion with the jaw, while pretty much keeping the embouchure still and keeping the oral cavity nice and open. So as you raise and lower your jaw, you're gonna make the pitch go slightly above, slightly below the pitch, hopefully in equal measures. And the average of that ends up sounding like an in two pitch, hopefully. So graphed, it would look like this when correct. And this would be bad because it never goes above the pitch. So the average makes it sound kind of flat, kind of gives it a lazy sound. And this is worse. And that's an echocardiogram. I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. You have a broken heart. And here's the conundrum. In order to sound fluid and free and easy, we have to practice vibrato in a strict metronomic fashion. So what we should do is start with our metronome at 60 or maybe a little bit slower, always with the metronome, and practice going from straight tone to adding vibrato and back to straight tone. But the entire time you're doing this, do not let up on your air support. Keep your air velocity high. Young players have a tendency to kind of back off the air as they add vibrato. From there, I like to have my students go down chromatically, holding straight tone for two beats and then two beats with three pulsations of vibrato and just go down the chromatic scale. From there, you can start using this exercise in all your scales and arpeggios, whatever you're working on there. And most days, I like to take a nice tune or melody and do it in 12 keys. The one I'm gonna demonstrate is a murder ballad from Appalachia called Down in the Willow Garden. I'll play this in 12 keys with roughly three vas per beat.
You can of course do this with any melody or jazz standard. If you want to use the tune I like to use, you can download it for free at thesaxophoneacademy.com under resources. Now for some tips when practicing vibrato. Number one, practice vibrato across the entire range of the instrument. In order to get the same fluid motion on low B flat, it's going to feel very different than middle C or F3, and certainly very different than the altissimo range. So as we practice vibrato, don't get used to doing it just in the middle register, practice it from low B flat all the way up to however high you're playing. Number two, vary the speeds. Some days you might wanna do slow with three pulsations per beat, Later, you can move all the way up into the 80s. 88 is about where I do max, four pulsations per beat. Any faster than that, you kind of sound like a billy goat. Number three, you're gonna to wanna to practice these exercises daily, especially when you're beginning. These are very small motions of the jaw, fine motor motions that need to be practiced and kept in shape daily. I have pro friends that if they take any time off at all for the saxophone, being vacation or holiday with the kids, for instance, they have to get back to the vibrato exercises immediately. It's one of the first things that seem to go in their playing, so stay on top of it. Number four, vary the usage and style of vibrato you use while playing melodies. If you always do the same speed and straight tone, adding vibrato at the same tempo, it's gonna sound old and very predictable fast. It's like paprika. You can use it occasionally, but if you use it across a four course meal, it's gonna get old fast. So you have to vary your usage. Now, how do you know when and how to apply it and how it should sound correctly with different types of genres and melodies? That's where the homework comes in. The most critical part to learning vibrato and getting great at vibrato is listening to great players. Now on tenor, of course, you have to listen to Stan Getz. The way he shapes a melody in his beautiful lush vibrato is a good place to start and a great person to mimic. In the same vein, one of my other favorite tenor players is Gene Amons. Big, beautiful sound, warm, luscious vibrato. Definitely check out the way he plays a ballad. His will weep for me is to die for. It's really good. For alto players, I adore a lesser known player from the West Coast scene, Bud Shank. Beautiful singing vibrato, especially on the slower tunes. Check out his stuff before 1960. After that, he kind of becomes a uh, Phil Woods clone, but his earlier stuff, beautiful. Also, of course, Art Pepper. A little bit more sparse, but a really beautiful way to use alto vibrato. And of course, you also have to listen to John Coltrane for a magnificent approach of how to use no vibrato and how powerful that can be when shaping a melody. Now, if you have a favorite record or favorite vibrato from a favorite player, let me know in the comments below. And stick around for next week. We have more cool topics coming up. And until then, go practice.